lovelies, Esther here with an invitation to join the Mindful Terra Community's monthly challenge for May 2022. Hashtag courting May. Yeah, we're, we're going to be spending the month thinking about those wily and wacky 16 cards, the courts, the royals, the faces, and trying to make sense of them in ways very pragmatic and specific and very, you know, just we're going to do our thing. Now, if you're already a part of the Mindful Terror community, doing our thing means potentially posting uh, daily draws on Facebook. If you're not a part of the Mindful Terror community, you are invited to join us. Uh, just send me an email, sd at mindfulterror.org. Um, yeah, or play along in the privacy of your own life. The internet is free. You are free. Let's be free together or apart. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Okay, courting May. Yeah, what's the story about that? You know, court cards are, I think, for many tarot readers, one of the most challenging uh, parts of the tarot deck to wrap your mind around. Uh, it just, what are they? Who are these people? Are these even people? How do I make sense of them? And in fact, um, thanks to Pamela Coleman Smith and Arthur Edward Waite and the emergence and widespread adoption of a fully scenic, fully illustrated tarot deck, the court cards have gotten more confusing than ever. You know, you look at the tarot deck and many, in fact, most modern tarot decks, you just have 78 images, right? And it can feel like these are 78 just kind of different depictions of energy, or people will often invoke the word archetype, like there are 78 archetypes here. But the truth is that there are three different kinds of depiction of personhood in the tarot, and they have really different qualities to them. And uh, a supple and adept and skillful reading will, will need to take into account those three different qualities. You know, this may look like very similar kinds of female presenting figures, particularly the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress. But, you know, we see these women in, in the middle of nature. They look like they're in repose. All three of them have a kind of serenity and receptivity in their depiction. Um, they also all in different ways have a kind of uh, nurturing quality to them. They seem sort of stereotypically feminine in, in the sense of receptive. And then, you know, the kind of uh, um, indications of fertility, like this natural fecundity is also really present and, and informs the ways in which motherhood, especially with these two characters, seems really um, in the foreground. So it feels like we just have three very similar types of characters with subtle differences. But the Empress is invoking an archetype in the truest Jungian sense, a kind of transpersonal icon or representation of some deeply cosmic uh, force or energy, a kind of um, grammar of the human psyche, right? The trump cards in their depiction of character bring forward cosmic patterns, transpersonal patterns, patterns that are about the soul with a capital S. On the other end of the spectrum, you know, when we see the lady in her garden, this is a impersonal depiction of energy. This is a depiction of the nine of pentacles, the nine of earth. Uh, this is a depiction of where the element, the elemental qualities of the suit are in that movement from ace to 10. So what does nine of earth look like? It looks like a lady in her garden with a falcon on her, on her hand. So where the trump cards give us a kind of transpersonal uh, sense of character, the story of the psyche of the soul with a capital S, of the self with a capital S, the pip cards, when they're illustrated with, with characters, right, whether they're human characters or animal characters, or even like, you know, plants or, or uh, minerals, uh, the pip cards illustrate a kind of impersonal character, the character of Earth in its circuit from ace to ten, from uh, potential to completion. So then where do we find the court cards? If we have impersonal and transpersonal, the court cards are where the energy of a suit 
the energy of tarot gets personal. These are cards that are all about what does it mean for earth energy to be imbued in personality, in the individual, in a, a particular human character. These are qualities of personality, types of personality. And that's why, you know, tools like the Meyer Briggs uh, typology of personality, of the functions of persona, um, that's why those can be very adept kind of tools to use in talking about the court cards, because we're dealing with human temperament. We're dealing with human personality, okay? But we lose that. It becomes hard to sort of, like, what is this? Who is she, right? But the other thing that's so uh, wily and tricky about the court cards is not just that we've lost sight of how to make sense of those characters in the context of all the other imagery in the tarot, but that as characters, these court cards have a double personality, right? Every court card has a doubled allegiance. It's both the page of pentacles, it has a relationship to its house, to its suit. And it's the page of pentacles. It has a relationship to its rank. Now the tradition going back to the golden dawn and maybe even back further than that, maybe even back into the 18th century, the tradition is to give elemental associations, earth, fire, air, and water, not only to the suits, but to the different ranks within the courts themselves. So this doubled identity that as Page of Pentacles, this guy has a relationship both to his house or their house and to their rank, that gets expressed in terms of a doubled elemental quality. So the Page of Pentacles is the Page of Earth, but as Page, that rank is associated with Earth as well. So one way people talk about this is to say that the Page of Pentacles is Earth of Earth. Uh, the Page of Cups, is earth of water, the page of wands is earth of fire, and the page of swords is earth of air. So they've got this doubleness to them, both rank and house, right? They're weird. So we're going to explore that weirdness together in May. The invitation is to spend the first uh, week of May on these earth rank cards, right? The pages. And the second week of May, on the Knights, the third week of May on the Queens, and the fourth week of May, and then into the fifth week as well on the Kings. Now, different tarot lineages and different tarot decks might have different associations, both for the elements uh, related to the four minor arcana suits. You know, they might say, oh, well, you know, like an Oud Picard deck will think of the cups as being related to air, not to water. But they also might have different elemental associations with each of the ranks in the court cards. So it might be that the Knight of Cups is something like, you know, air of air as opposed to fire of water. Check out what the associations are with whatever deck you're using. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to email me, esti at mindfultarot.org. Didn't I say that already? Yeah, be in touch um, and have at it. So how, how is this going to proceed? So for me, um, all year long, I've been exploring both my card of the month and my hub card, my card of the year. Um, that's been a constant exploration. And, I, and May is going to be no different. Actually, as it turns out, my May card is the Fool, which is super cool. <laughs> the Fool is super cool. So I'm going to be doing a simple Roots and Canopy spread, a two-card spread, where the first card or cards, in this case, I'm going to be doing two cards, as I'll explain in a minute. Uh, the first two cards are like, what is my ground today? What am I rooted in today? And the second card is the canopy. Like how is my how is my energy or my my day unfolding or spreading out? What where's the expansion? Like I'm rooted, how am I expanding out? Okay. Two cards, very simple two card spread. However, part of my roots is always gonna be the fool. The other card of my roots is gonna be in the first week of May, it's gonna be a page card. So how am I gonna pick my page card? I'm gonna just shuffle my deck and I'm gonna go through the deck and I'm gonna find the first page card. I'm cheating now, I'm looking at it face front. Okay, the first page card I find, so I went card one, card two, 
card three, card four, card five, page pentacles. And now I'm going to pick the very next card. Ooh, the eight of swords. So my first spread will be my roots, which will be the page of pentacles and the fool, my card of the month. That's what's grounding me today. And then my canopy is the eight of swords. So how is this energy of the page of pentacles alongside my card of the month? How is that providing a basis for today? How is that informing the eight of swords? How do I see this card, this page of pentacles alongside my card of the month? How do I see these two coming together to talk about this day as an eight of swords day? So the encouragement here is basically to do, to do a two card spread, maybe a three card spread reading whatever your court card is against uh, your card of the month. If your card of the month is itself a court card, that may be too complicated, but play with it. Have fun with it. Experiment. The spreads are yours. <laughs> the challenge is yours. Just figure out a way to move forward and experiment, trial and error. But how does how did do, how does the day help me understand my page of pentacles and how does it help me understand this eight of swords so that's the challenge courting may <sighs> clear as mud let's play together okay toodaloo